Hello, my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet. And this is the first in a series of videos that the two of us will be doing on walks in the New Forest. And today we're going to be doing a circular walk starting and finishing in the village of Frogham in Hampshire. There's a lot to see and a lot to investigate. Are you ready? He's ready. Let's go. Come on. Well, we've literally just come out of the car park and already there's a, a little anomaly to have a look at. I'm just going to turn the camera around so that you can look. A lovely little thatched and cob cottage. Although, not really my colour, but sweet. Anyway, well, an interesting start. So we're just going to have a little wander down this road before we hit onto the, the main forest. Tell you a bit about Frogham. It's a very small village located what, top northwest corner of the New Forest. It's about two miles away from Fording Bridge. Whoops, we've got some company already. Hello folks, mummy and baby. Looks like there's some more coming. Thankfully I've got Logan on a, a tight lead, although he's pretty good with livestock. They're obviously on their way somewhere. And actually as we pass here, there's a little little well. This is called Abbot's Well. It's quite insignificant. You could almost miss it if you weren't careful. And as you can see, I'll get down close, there's a, a sort of open area and then there's a top there. I'm just looking around, see if we can see 12.15 I say it's, it's been called different things over the years but it's been known as Abbot's Well since about 1670 switch the camera around again and now we're going to go on to the the forest itself it's an August morning about half past seven something like that the sun is just beginning to come up and it is quite beautiful we've already seen some donkeys and now we've got some cattle hiding behind the bracken there we're going to make our way along this path and head towards a place called Latchmere Brook, or Latchmore Brook, should I say. It's a very, very peaceful start to the day. Looks like we've got a little crab apple tree on the right. I say loads of heather mixed with gorse and some beautiful views in the background. That's a Hazley or Hasley enclosure. I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the walk. But, uh, it's, uh, are you enjoying it? I think so. Anyway, we will continue our way down this track and we'll see you when we get to the brook. Well, we've just reached Latchmore Brook. 
just come over a little bridge and there it is it's a little bit dry at the moment after all we are in the middle of the summer it's a very popular spot for ponies obviously for water and uh, the little wooded area that we're in is also called Latchmore Shade and as the name suggests it's a good area for shade but on top of that just go through the undergrowth here it's uh, it has a little breeze going through this area most of the time and that helps keeps the flies off the ponies anyway I'm just going to pan the camera around now as we come on to a very much an open area of heathland and also it's getting a bit bumpy and I want to make sure I don't trip up so I'll walk for the next mile or so is going to follow this little brook which we're going to keep to our left hand side you can see it's very brown in colour lovely oak trees alongside and I uh, always find it fascinating the way nature or shall I say erosion takes place I don't know if you can see see this down here that shows a sort of sandy soil that's Obviously when it's been raining it's created quite a ravine at some stage. There we go. So as we wander along here, just tell you a little bit about the New Forest. It's one of the last sort of large areas of unenclosed pasture land, heathland and forests left in the south of England. It was uh, William the Conqueror back in 1079 that actually established it as a forest, as a royal forest. I think he used it mainly for hunting deer. But it's 90% uh, of it is still owned by the Crown. And since 1923, it's been managed by the Forestry Commission. And one of the big changes in the forest took place around about the 18th century when a lot of the trees were cut down, particularly oaks, to build ships for the Royal Navy. And as a result of that, they needed to plant some new trees to replace them. So what you do see dotted around this particular area in the north of the forest are a number of enclosures which we'll come across that all started to be planted at around about what from about 1780 onwards and we shall see a few of those on our walk the sun is really beginning to come out there's some some warmth in it we've come quite early because the weather forecast for this afternoon the next few days it's not too good for the moment it's quite glorious Action. I thought I'd stop here just to give you a, a 360 degree view of the whole area so in the distance there is a ridge that's Hampton Ridge which we'll be eventually walking along this is Latchmore Brook and then I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll follow this view all the way around. A lot of people think all oh, new forest must be lo just loads and loads of trees but a fair chunk of it is is open heathland and in fact this area the grass is not too bad quality wise and normally you'd expect to see quite a few ponies and cattle grazing out there. None at the moment there must be all either having a lie in or they know I'm filming and I mentioned enclosures and there's a good example of one in the background that is 
Is it Haisley or Hasley enclosure? 1846 that was planted. And then just going to pan around. Hopefully we will see some ponies at some stage. Certainly there's a whippet here, that's for sure. Anyway, let us kick on. We have some new forest ponies at last. Happily grazing away. I'll just turn the camera around so you can have a good look. So all of these ponies and cattle will be owned by folk known as commoners that will have grazing rights on the forest and each animal will be identified usually with ponies they'll have a brand mark on them obviously cattle will have tags in their ears now I don't know if you can pick this up but the grey on the left hand side next to the chestnut you can just about make out it's got a collar around its neck that's actually a reflective collar in case it gets near the road all the roads around this neck of the woods are unfenced and although there's a 40 mile an hour limit it is quite dangerous so at night time if that pony got near the road hopefully the reflective collar would show up the only problem is it's only attached by velcro uh, it's designed to come off quite easily in case the pony gets caught up in branches of a tree so they do tend to uh, come off a little bit too easily but it's a good idea anyway we shall leave them peacefully grazing away and we will head off continuing our journey eastbound I've just temporarily stopped I just want to show you something here I've only just noticed we've got some it's a gorse bush but it's been obviously had some sort of fire damage and in fact if we pan around there's a whole area probably the size of a couple of football pitches where there's been a fire and almost certainly this has been man-made it's a sort of a technique for managing heathland it's called controlled burning usually undertaken by the forestry commission between february and march each year when no birds are nesting or animals producing young and they create a, a fire break around the whole area that's going to be burnt using a huge cutting machine but only a small bit of the heathland is, is done at any one time and the area is rotated every 25 years or so it's always done by very experienced staff but the reason they do it is it it gets rid of invading scrub and allows the heather to to regenerate and it's very good at destroying ticks apparently but these burnt stacks are known locally as blackjacks anyway we're now going to we're just coming towards the edge of the uh, open heathland area and we're shortly going to start heading into the forest that starts to get a bit spooky luckily i've got a big brave whippet with me <laughs> we're just heading into the much more wooded area now mainly pine trees I'll just turn the camera around so you can see where we're going we're actually going down a track that cuts through two enclosures on the right we've got Slowden or Slodden enclosure and on the left it's Older Hill enclosure they were both established in 1864 and I say they're mainly pine trees although the further we go in we gradually start to see much more evidence of oak trees which of course was the 
original planting. It's quite noticeable that we're now in the shade and it's, it's much more cooler. Still plenty of plenty of pony poo about the place. Wow, now this looks interesting. I'm pretty certain that this is a, a stock pound that's uh, probably used when they're doing the drifts. About once a year ponies are rounded up in the autumn just to, so people can check up on their health and well-being. There's about 30 drifts a year with only a small area done at a time and basically in Agister is basically a local official will get together with some very experienced horse riders and round the ponies up and uh, I guess yeah a little gate at the end there makes it easy if any do need attending to they can be uh, looked at in there but just this actually looks quite quite new so I wonder if it's replaced an old one but you can see the system that they used right in the distance you can see the open area so they would corral the ponies through this natural funnel trees either side and I think there is some fencing and then uh, as I say into that area there. I didn't actually know this was here. Hmm. Learn something every day. Okay we're now going to take a left turn and we're going to go even deeper into the forest. Nice easy gate. Logan gave me a little pull off there, wanting to see if the gimbal works. But this really is quite a peaceful, very serene, very quiet, just the natural sounds of the forest. Sunlight beginning to poke through. Very lovely place to be very reflective and we're just going to go over a bridge I'm guessing this is still Latchmore Brook although if I turn the camera around it's not exactly free-flowing to say the least we are in the middle of August and uh, no doubt if we came here during the winter that would be quite a quite a torrent All right. so I say a mixture of trees still the old oaks and the newer pine trees I haven't seen any deer yet but they are very common around here roe deer fallow deer and indeed the smaller seeker ah what do we got here a seat to rest our weary legs logan what does that say in memory of eric ashby president of the New Forest Badger Group. There we go. Oh yes, there's a carving of a badger. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Well, we're going to sit down and 
have a sandwich and Logan can have a bonio. We'll catch up with you shortly. I'm now just come out of the forest and uh, out into a nice open area again. Now, I'm not saying I got lost in the forest, just took a temporary detour. After a while one forest track looks like another. To be honest I'm usually quite good with directions, especially a day like today, the sun's out, I know what time it is, I know what time of year it is, so look just by seeing where the sun is in the sky I've got a rough idea where south is. And also if I look at just individual trees that are out on their own, the predominant wind around this neck of the woods comes from the southwest, so the trees would tend to bend towards the northeast. That's all very well and good, but not much use when you're in a big, thick, dark forest. I must bring a compass next time. Anyway, stop moaning, Dave. Uh, we're now we're going to turn the camera around. We're going to head up to that ridge up there, which is Hampton Ridge. Um, the ridge itself is a uh, one of the main walking, cycling and horse riding routes through the north and end of the forest from Fritham to Frogham. Just on the left hand side you might not be able to see it, there's a very insignificant mound which is a old Bronze Age barrow and on the right of this path supposedly there's the remains of a a Roman road but um, it's very hard to find certainly uh, I haven't been able to find it anyway as we're going uphill and it's very hard to speak and walk uphill at the same time I shall see you at the top we're now on top of Hampton Ridge and that's looking west but I just noticed on the left hand side as I was going along something slightly unusual which I thought I'd show you. Just pan the camera around and it's a giant concrete arrow. Looks as though it's pointing south and this was actually a directional arrow that was here in the Second World War because believe it or not this whole area was requisitioned by the Ministry of Defence for five years during the war and it was used as a bombing range. Although I'm pleased to say it's all back to nature now. But um, about a year ago I acted as a guide for a guy called Richard Vobes, uh, also known as the Bold Explorer, and we did a series of four videos in which we explored and investigated this whole area and in particular we were looking for artifacts and evidence of um, the old targets and what have you that were used in the bombing range so if you're interested in finding out a little bit more just go on to YouTube and go into the search engine and just type in the bald explorer new forest and that should bring it all up Anyway, I'm just going to pan round for another absolutely gorgeous view. Right in the distance there, say we're pointing west, I don't know if you can see, I can see just on the horizon some hills, those are the Purbeck Hills and the, the Jurassic Coast. It really is quite lovely. I've been probably walking around here for about an hour now and I've yet to see another human being. I've, I've had the place to myself, it's been lovely. Anyway, there's just one more thing that I want to show you before we end the walk and that's in that direction. Follow me. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you on the walk. I've just clambered down the north side of Hampton Ridge. We've sort of we found a very unusual structure built into the side of the, the hill. 
Now that is a marker's hut for a rifle range, or a Victorian rifle range. It was built in 1894, although the brickwork there looks quite modern. So I guess it's been refurbished at some stage. And the target is over there. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. But the firing positions were about 800 yards over to the left of me. And that's the little hamlet of Blissford in the background. So uh, anyway, let's go and have a look and see if we can find the target. As we do, we've got a nice view of the northern side of the area. Right in the distance is another ridge called God's Hill Ridge and at the top of that there's a road i think it's the b3078 from memory that's one of the <laughs> one of the main routes across the forest from fording bridge to bramshaw it's a shame you can just about make out in the distance massive electricity pylons which is a bit of a blight on the landscape now, I think they're owned by the National Grid, aren't they? But I did read somewhere that they were thinking about taking them down and actually burying the cables in the ground. But uh, I believe the locals are dead against that. So it looks as though those pylons are gonna be here for a while, which is a shame. Right, some more gorse and brambles fight our way through and I'm pretty sure the target must be somewhere around here this looks an obvious position for it let's see if we can see anything around here you lead the way Logan aha here we go so that's clearly the bank that the bullets ended up in and uh, well this looks quite modern indeed there's some graffiti on there that can't be the original Victorian target but I should imagine at some stage there would have been some metal work with uh, so they could raise and lower the targets from anyway it's not what you expect to see in the middle of the forest, that's for sure. Well, we're nearly at the end of our walk. We're going to head back and uh, see if we can find the pub in Frogham. So we'll see you there. Well, folks, we made it back to the pub. The Foresters in Frogham. Hopefully you enjoyed following a bungling old fool and his whippet meandering across the forest. If you did, then please like comment and subscribe hopefully sometime you'll see us again in the future on another walk but in the meantime thanks for watching cheerio hey now whose round is it hmm? mine i expect so